So I am going to call the meeting to order and um, welcome everyone that's here this evening. <laughs> Sorry. Those in the we just have uh, those in the hallway. Um, and also those that um, are watching later on on YouTube. So, first order of business, just a reminder if you have cell phones, electronic devices, turn them on airplane mode or off or on silent so they don't disrupt the meeting. And second, please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So with that, um, I'll make a, I'll start out with a few introductions. We have... Um, I'm going to start on that far end tonight. Um, sitting in for Chief Falls is uh, Lieutenant uh, Sergeant, thank you, uh, Patrick Cummings. Thank you for being here. Nice to have you. And then we have um, our city attorney, Ron Beatty, with Kennedy and Graven. Then we have our community development director, David Abel, our finance director, Brian Grimm. And next to me, we have our city administrator, Mike Baroni. I'm Lisa Whalen. I'm the mayor. And next to me, we have council members, Pam Mortensen, Mike Molitor, uh, John Chamberlain, absent this evening, is Shannon Bruce. And then on the end, we have our city engineer with WSB, Allison Fowski, our city clerk, Chris Lindquist, next to her. Behind Chris, we have uh, Cassandra Tabor, who is director of administration. And then joining us shortly will be our public works superintendent, Gary Peters. And then also we have Adam Gabois with us, also with um, WSB Engineering. So with that, um, are there any changes or additions to the agenda? Hearing none, then, is there a motion to approve as presented? So moved. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, motion has been made by Ms. Mortensen and seconded by Mr. Chamberlain. All those in favor signify with aye. 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 All those opposed, motion passes. We don't have any special presentations this evening. Um, I don't see anybody here signed up for persons to be heard, so we will move on to our consent agenda items. Are there any items you need to remove? Otherwise, they will consist of approve our work session meeting minutes from September 3rd, 2019, approve the regular meeting minutes from September 3rd, 2019, a resolution to approve claims, a resolution to approve change orders 2 and 3 for Lotus Drive Improvements, City Project 0418, and then a resolution to approve a wetland replacement plan on the Dakota Rail Trail for Three Rivers Park District. That is A, B, C, D, and E. Is there a motion to approve those consent agenda items? So moved. Okay, motion has been made. Is there a second? I'll second that. A second has been made. A motion was made by Mr. Chumperlin and seconded by Ms. Mortensen. Any further questions? Hearing none, all those in favor signify with aye. 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 All those opposed, motion passes 4-0. Next, we have our public hearing. We have two public hearings this evening. Um, both are for temporary one-day on-sale liquor licenses, one for the Northwest Tonka Lions and one for the Mound West Tonka Rotary. Ms. Lindquist, I believe that is you. Madam Mayor, members of the Council, um, would you like me to do them both at the same time and then just vote on them separately? Or I, Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Um, Northwest Tonka Lions and the West Tonka Rotary both have submitted applications to host um, fundraising events for respective um, <laughs> you uh, fundraising do events, I guess. <laughs> okay, so maybe I should do them separately. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Lions will be hosting the Weekend Wine Fest, which will be October 5th from 4 to 6 p.m. at the Voyager Environmental Center. Um, again, this is a fundraising event to uh, for for the weekend um, organization. They did a they applied similarly to a similar license last fall. Uh, I think that's it for that one. Um, for the West Tonka Rotary, they're hosting the Tonka Brew Fest um, event, and that will be November second from three to six at Gales Woods Farm. And this is a fundraising event for the Rotary Club of Mount West Tonka. Again, they did a similar event last year. Um, with the Tonka Brewfest, it has been supported by the city of Minnetrista in the past, and um, we are a sponsor of this event. In previous years, the council has waived their $40 um, administration fee. 
uh, staff is recommending doing that again this year. Um, it was published in the papers and it was posted and mailed to neighbors within 500 feet. I received no comments for either one of them. Uh, one thing, they both did pass their background check and um, I will be, they both have special events permits and I will be sending it off to the um, alcohol and gambling for final approval. Okay. So we'll need to open public hearing, but we can do that respectively for both of them. Okay. So I will do that. Um, we don't have anybody here, but um, officially I have to do that. We're going to open the public hearing, and if there's anybody here that wishes to speak for or against or have comments regarding these two temporary one-day on-sale liquor licenses for the Northwest Tonka Lions and Mound West Tonka Rotary, you may do so at this time. There is nobody here, so I'm going to close the public hearing. I just have one uh, request if, um, for the council consideration. Uh, the Northwest Tonka Lions are hosting this event as a WeCan um, fundraiser, and WeCan is a service organization here in, in the West Tonka area, and they help um, people that are in need of um, financial help and, and social help, basically. And they do service a lot of our res uh, some of our residents as well. And I'm just wondering if we could extend to them the same courtesy as the Mound West Tonka Rotary by waiving the $40 um, permit application fee. It would be a huge amount, but... I think it would be a nice gesture. And they do incredible things for the community. I would support that. Okay. So would you need a motion to that effect to? Yeah, we can just include that in the motion for the one-day permit. We'll just. Okay. Like we have for the, um, the lion, uh, excuse me, for the <coughs> Rotary Club, we have in there that, um, that we are waiving the fee. So you can just include that in your motion. Okay. All right. Any other questions or comments? Otherwise, is there a motion to approve the temporary one-day liquor licenses for both these organizations with the caveat that both organizations will be awarded a um, reprieve, if you will, of the uh, $40 um, application fee? So moved. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. Uh, Ms. Mortensen make that motion, and Mr. Molitor seconded that. Any further questions? Hearing none, all those in favor signify with aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes for all. Thank you. So next we'll move on to our business items. First is approving uh, for the prepayment and redemption of the city's general obligation improvement refunding bond series 2017B. Mr. Grimm? Yes. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor and Council. And um, thank you. I'll, I'll be taking these next couple items. And there's also a Chris uh, Mickelson from Ellers is here, but I think he'll be speaking more to the third item with the, the refinancing of the uh, 2010A bonds, which we'll um, get to in a couple items here. But this uh, first item has to deal with the uh, Series 2017B bonds, which ultimately w were originally our um, bonds that funded the roundabout project in, in association with the Woodland Cove development. I think we had talked in um, August at one of the uh, work sessions when we were talking the budget and levy discussions that the uh, developer had uh, let myself know that they were looking at paying off the assessments and this um, that project was 100% paid for through special assessments to the Woodland Cove LLC or Carlson Real Estate Group and they did ultimately pay those off in late August so now this uh, motion and would uh, basically uh, call the rest of the bonds that are, are um, outstanding to be paid um, we had when we had done these bonds back uh, originally in 2014 or 13 um, they were structured to be callable at any time so this uh, motion or resolution would be to uh, call the bonds and make it make them payable by November 1st um, and we would pay them off with those funds we received for the assessment so have you received those funds yet yes. Okay, yep. so we have them sitting in the bank. Yep, yeah, yep. yep correct. Yep. Okay. So we got those in late August, so they're yep. here and ready to, and basically just with the logistics of, of calling the bonds, the, the November 1st date seemed to be attainable to get that ready to structure to, okay. to pay off and, and yep. uh, get those off the books, I guess. That's okay. <clears throat> um, is, the, is this bond, there's one of them, like, there's a number of here, so there's one that had, there was a 660000 that the city funded, I believe, through sewer and water. Yeah, that'll be the next. The next item. one. Yeah, okay. This one was the one that was. Yeah, the, the roundabout was. Oh, this is the roundabout. Yep, I'm sorry. Yep. yep. Okay. All right. <coughs> Any so, questions? 
is do we have a legal obligation within the bond issuance to to pay these off because of the that they've been paid early I don't know if we have a uh, I don't think so legal obligation I think it's just now that the funds are available and they would sure. they would just be sitting in that debt service fund I guess the why wouldn't you pay them? Well, okay, not, I'm not advocating we don't, mm -hmm. but what I'm thinking about is we've talked about in the past to alleviate some of our cash flow issues with road financings that we would do an interfund loan from one of the other funds. As an alternative to that, or maybe in addition to that, is rather than using these funds to pay off the debt, we've already got the debt outstanding, to use some or all of them towards future road projects and leave the bond issue. It would save us some bond issuance costs um, and already have the cash there. Um, I realize, you know, in the, in the course of what we have right now, perhaps not, but it was just a thought mm -hmm. that I had that perhaps rather than just automatically paying them off, we use the funds for other road construction. It would alleviate some I mean, of the cash flow concerns. Yeah, I see, see your point. I mean, obviously, by paying them off, we'd avoid any... What, what's the balance interest. on this one? The uh, two million five hundred sixty thousand. And what's the payment on it? Because then see where we'd be. Right, we'd I mean, to <coughs> but I mean, it just be. And again, it doesn't have to be. It probably doesn't have to be an all or nothing either. Right. <coughs> you could pay off some of the bonds, and, and and I'm just thinking about. You know, we've expressed some concerns on cash over the last few meetings about how we optimize our use and this is just one potential way to do it. I, I, I'm fully supportive of if, this approach if we want to do that, but I think it's something we probably should consider that you know, if, if we don't, <coughs> I realize we're going to be paying interest on it, but we don't pay off, but <coughs> it, it may be a relatively low cost way to fund our, the city's half of uh, road projects for the next year or two. So what is the interest then? What, I mean, just out of curiosity. Um, do you know, um, Mr. Mickelson? Do you happen to know? Yeah, I don't have that. That's good. Okay. No, I mean, it's something that I could certainly get the city tomorrow. But as mm -hmm. I mean, I I get what you're saying, and I think we'd have to find out what how much one we would want to right. keep, and then what is the interest on it. Um, I don't know, is it something we want to explore? Because, I mean, there's nothing, you know, I think you put November 1st just because of what we need to do administratively, but I don't think there's anything magical about that date. If we said we want to do December 1st, I think that'd be an option, or do it, is it on a yearly basis? Correct, yeah. I mean, I think, yeah, there's no time sense rather than, yeah, I think we're our next, um, I think this is on a uh, February, August semi-annual payment schedule sure. or whatever. So yeah. that would be where the, the timing would come in. Um, yeah, I guess some. Um, I mean, I guess we'd have to, I, I'd like to know um, how much we would keep for that purpose, what the interest rate is, what our payment would be. I mean, you know, there's a lot of. Well, yeah, interest rate. Yeah, to payment. me, I guess right, th right. these bonds, I mean, interest rates have pretty much been on a, downward decline over the last several years that if we had to go up, you know what, to me, I don't, I think <coughs> this, the rates on these would be higher than anything we do now, I believe, because that's why we're even Right, I mean, but I, I think what, what I'm saying here is the issue we've had is we haven't had a, a critical mass to be able to issue bonds effect, cost effectively, and so I wouldn't, you know, I think we're talking 2.13 million here. Um, yeah, approximately, I, it, or this, 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 but whatever it's it's, it's well over a million. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't advocate that we would, you know, use all of that because you're right. That if, if we had two million to use in other roads, I'd say yeah, go ahead and call these out and we'll reissue new ones at a lower rate. But if we only needed, you know, if we're looking at a next year project of six hundred thousand and we need three hundred thousand and we don't have the cash, you know, do we hold three hundred out of here? You might pay a little bit more. Um, and maybe we bundle that going forward. I, I'm just trying to think of, you know, kind of address I think, some of the concerns yeah. we've had before. I'd, I'd rather take it out of a cup. There's some other funds we could borrow it from. Um, and, and we've talked about the tree fund borrowing from right. that fund. Um, there's about 350000 in that fund. So if we borrowed it from there, um, that might be a better way to go. There's other. There's the park dedication fund. We could borrow on a short-term yeah. basis sure. something. Or, a you know, rate. Right. yeah. 
Yeah, that, that's so fine. I, I think, think just going forward, that sure, we probably I mean, should be cognizant. Yeah. I mean, I think it's been a good practice. I certainly don't have any issue with that. Um, but just as we change a little bit how we finance our roads, we might want to give some consideration that if we get early payments in, it may not always be the best thing to pay off the bonds if we can use the cash for something else. But if we want to pay these down, I, I do not object. Okay. Just want to throw it out there. I do appreciate your creativity. Like yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's, yeah, it is. Very good. All right. So good question. Um, any other discussion? Always good to have different ideas. So, uh, so is there then a uh, motion to approve providing for the prepayment and redemption of the city's general obligation improvement refunding bond series 2017B? So moved. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. Motion has been made by Ms. Mortensen and seconded by Mr. Molitor. Any further questions? Hearing none, all those in favor signify with aye. 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 All those opposed, motion passes 4-0. So next, we're um, approved resolution providing for the prepayment and redemption of a portion of the city's taxable general obligation bond series 2017C. And this is for Kings Point Road. Correct. Yeah. Where there's 660000 still outstanding that the city would still owe. Yep. Okay. Yep, Madam Mayor and Council. So, yeah, this is on uh, page, it uh, starts on page 109 of your packet. And this was the ones we actually issued them as uh, taxable um, general, general obligation refunding bonds, this series 2017C. I think they originally levied back in, in 2014 and re refinanced once already. Um, the developer, uh, as, as stated and with the earlier agenda item, did uh, make the payments of, of their assessments and basically uh, there's 2135000 left of the bonds. The, uh, what was the assessable portion was what we're looking to partially call the 1475000 The other remaining 660000 would stay out there and be paid through uh, water and sewer funds, you know, utility portion of the project. So, um, as mm -hmm. with that, you know, previous agenda item, you know, these were set up to be called at any time, either in full or a portion. And in this case, you know, we would make the recommendation, obviously, to do the portion, seeing the the city portion. Um, I don't think it. Why well, we wouldn't want to look to pay that down right now. We got we got the, the matching revenue was on the the assessments that just came in here. You know. The the one one point four seven five. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. So Yeah, I had just was wondering, you know, did would we want to pay off the six hundred and sixty thousand, but I think in lieu of Mr. Molitor's comments and, and kind of what we're looking at for possible um interfund loans, um we probably wouldn't because then we would be using up our cash in our sewer and our water funds. Yep. And the rate still there is is at a you know yeah. A good rate, you know, not probably quite as low as we'd get right now, but it's still a, okay. it's still a good rate. Um, so, is the city's portion this six hundred sixty thousand? Is that on some type of set amortization schedule, or is that just yes? That that payment, is on yeah. a, I mean, is what is that twenty years? Do you know? Yeah, there's so I think. Um, yeah, it was originally a, a twenty year, but here now it's got you know, right, less, less years from the original. Sure. Yeah, okay. correct. Right. Yep. So we would just, and this comes out of the sewer and water fund. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think if we didn't have a water tower project staring at us, we'd probably right. consider that. But yeah, that's, yeah, that's I, I kind of looked at it and I thought, well, should we pay it off or, you know, might, but um, I agree. If, if, if it wasn't for the water tower. Now, my only question is when we do the water tower, maybe we could look at what it, if, if we could benefit from rolling the 660 into that or, Refinancing it if we get a much better rate, I don't know. Um, the only thing that would be different on this one is um, the water tower we would issue as a tax exempt bond again. Oh, okay. Because with the uh, ten million bank so PF qualification we get e okay. each year, but this had this back in the day was ended up being a taxable geo bond based on the amount of debt we were issuing at the time and such. So, okay, um, and we were still able to get a really competitive interest rate, but. This could not be combined in with another issuance such as the water tower. Okay. All right. It, it could be looked at, I guess, separately when we look at that. You know, we'll be looking at financing that in you know January, February, shortly after the first of the year. One, as long as the water tower project moves forward. Yeah. You know, and gets the construction, etc. You know, so. Right. And, and to your point on that, if we get when we get to the water tower discussion, <coughs> we may you know we've talked about using some cash for that. Right. Perhaps instead we use some of that cash to pay this off and, and do, a, do a higher 
blown on the water tower. Correct. That's, that could be looked at, though. Right, right. That's and we can look at that as we get closer right. then. Right. Yeah, and that's that was another option. Okay. Yeah. Um, so um, is there then a motion? Any other questions or comments? Okay, is there a resolution providing for the re prepayment and redemption of a portion of the city's taxable general obligation refunding bond series 2017C? So moved. Okay, is there a second? I'll second. Okay, motion has been made by Mr. Chumperlin and seconded by Mr. Molitor. All those in favor signify with aye. 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 All those opposed, motion passes 4 0. So next, and I think I, this is where I have. A number of questions. So this is um, approve a resolution providing for the sale of the a million four thirty general obligation refunding bonds. So you want to re refinance these? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Madam Mayor and, and Council. So yeah, this uh, starts on uh, page one thirteen of your packet. And I guess one thing I'll probably point off right off the bat, just in case the, the memo wasn't clear, is that uh, that forty six thousand to fifty thousand dollars savings range. That was net of any issuance cost. You know, gross savings is okay. Hundred thousand some. The issuance cost was fifty thousand, and this would be the what the city would you know save in in net. You know, okay. so I just wanted to clarify that. And that you know, as per the the memo there, you know, it's estimated right now to be about a three point four percent savings. And I can you know, maybe let uh, okay. And that's, and that's a total savings, not an annual. Correct. That's yeah. That'd be a total. Yep. So um, yeah. I don't know if. Uh, Maybe, uh, Mr. Mickelson. Mr. Mickelson? Wanna, yeah. Order. Well, thank you, Mayor thank you. and uh, members of Council. Again, my name is Chris Mickelson with Ellers and Associates. Uh, my colleague Todd Hagen is the city's primary advisor, although he was uh, double booked this evening, so he to, it asked if I could pinch hit for him, and I'm happy to uh, be here in front of you all. So, as you likely have in front of you, the pre sale report for this uh, proposed issue 1430000 general obligation improvement refunding bonds what we're calling 2019A series. Uh, I can certainly go through each of these piece by piece, or if there's any other questions that you may have right off the bat, I can, I can you know, address those. Uh, do you have a preference one way or another? I think, it would, I think if we just have questions, unless you want him to go through everything piece by piece. You know, I think questions would be fine. Yeah, it was, it, um, it was attached in the packets. That, right. You know. <laughs> so my, my question had been, and Mr. Um, Grimm, I think, answered it. When I looked at this in the packet, it showed a, it said the underwriter's discount, 17160 and then it said cost of issuance, um, 39000 So that uh, that came up to um, 56000 sure. And then it said that we had a 50000 approximately 40 to 50, Forty-five to fifty thousand dollars savings, sure. and I'm like, well, well, wait a minute, that doesn't add up. Yeah, you if you're, it, if yeah, it was, fifty-six uh, to yeah, do exactly. it, and then, so um, as long as the forty-five to fifty thousand is um, what we actually will gain after those expenses, sure, um, I, that's much better. <laughs> so a, a, a few comments on that. The first is the underwriter's discount. So that's what an underwriter pays themselves for making this market. Uh, this will access the national bond market like sales that you guys have had in the past. And so that's a, uh, a component of these competitive sales is, is this underwriter's discount. Uh, cost of issuance, that's uh, our fee as well as the bond attorney's fee and then standard and poor's fee. That's all built into that $39,000 mm -hmm. estimate. And then as it relates to the savings, uh, that savings estimate, which you'll see on this page of your packet, it's labeled debt service comparison. Uh, what we call the future value savings, that's that $50,476 estimate. The present value savings estimated at $45,970. Uh, and that makes a 3.428% uh, estimated savings. That's relative to the interest rate that's assumed on the previous page for mm -hmm. this new bond issue. And right now that's estimated at 2.07%, although I will say that that has uh, 20 basis points of cushion in it. And so what that says is if the bond sale happened today, this would likely be closer to 1.8 or so percent, 1.85, 1.87%. At what point will we know what that is? Uh, on, this, on the day of sale. I mean, approximately timing-wise, when would that happen? I think that so, was, there was a schedule on page... 119. Yep, so I can speak to that too. Oh, that's, no, that's on page five of the pre sale report. And uh, that date is? 
Pardon me? And that date is? That date is uh, October 21st. Thank you. Is the sale date. And Thank then you. And the council would award that even. Yeah. Okay. All right. October 21st. Okay. That's after our meeting, though, isn't it? Um, that should be our, our second meeting. No, of our second that, meeting. Is that our second meeting? The sale would take the place. Third Monday that, of the oh, the 7th, seventh, the seventh, the and then the 21st. First, yeah. Yeah. And the council would award that even. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we'd get the results that morning and then either yeah, Mr. Hagen mm -hmm. or, or one of the other you know representatives would be here to present mm -hmm. it that night and hopefully it's better than that 3.4 percent you know when we wouldn't do it if it was if it gets to be less than that three percent we'd just pull it and say it's okay. not worth doing it I think there's some statutory yeah. requirements that says it's got to be at least three there aren't if, if it was an advanced refunding it would be statutorily oh. required to save at least three percent but with the current refunding there isn't that three percent uh, goal but if it doesn't achieve that, we wouldn't recommend it. Still a good it. guideline, even with all the statutory requirements. Yeah. Yeah. Does this extend the life or the um, time it frame? Not. It does 12 not. Years. It's okay. 12 years if you leave the old bonds out. It's 12 years if you refund. With these okay. Bonds. All right. So uh, I think I got the answer to the question, but I think my question was at what level do we kind of consider this? And you're, you know, because we're looking at about a $50,000 savings here, you're looking at it at a percent. Of you said about three percent. That's kind of what your threshold is. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You hope for four or five, you know, or better. You know, but, right. but three is at least the floor or whatever. To, okay. And I think we've done some by paying. This is the one where we had paid down some last um, right. um, February, or I guess February of this year. So I think there we were able to save some interest, you know, by paying it down. And this is just another opportunity. I think uh, when I talked with um, Mr. Hagen on the phone, he said with it being close to the call date, this is still a good opportunity to. To do it based on interest spreads and all that financial sure. advisor, I guess you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> I just, I just, just want to make sure we're not, you know, it's like got to have some. Yeah. You know, I don't want right. to jizz this down for ten thousand bucks. Yeah. Right. No. 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 Yeah. Exactly. yeah. A, a point on that topic is the the f so we're, we're approaching the call date now, and the further you get past that call date, the less and less savings there are because now you have fewer and fewer maturities to be refunding. Yeah. And so the, the right. argument there is, you know, your savings basically go away as time as time as progresses. Time passes, yeah. So, yeah. All right. Okay. Good. Um, all right. So, what is your wish? Approve the resolution providing for the sale of one point four a million four thirty general obligation improvement refunding bond series twenty nineteen A. This would be refunding or refinancing of the twenty ten A bonds. So moved. Is there a second? I'll second that. Okay, Mr. Molitor made that motion and Ms. Mortensen second that. Any further questions? Hearing none, all those in favor signify with aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes 4-0. Um, before, uh, before you go, I do have a question on conduit bonds. And um, recently I was at a meeting and uh, Medina actually just um, Issued, or I'm not sure what the correct term is, but they took on a $10 million conduit bond, and I think that they said that it was like 65. It was a 10 million, but they the underwriting again. I'm not sure on the term. So you're, was, you're on the right course. Okay, <laughs> was 65. It was, it was 50 basis points. It's okay, 50, 50 basis point. So I thought it was 50, 65. 50,000. So, and that's free money to them. Is that every year? It's one time. It's it's a one time. It's a one time cost that uh, is built into the transaction that the underwriter gets paid. Okay. Uh, it's their compensation for uh, buying the bonds and then finding the various end investors that will hold those bonds. Uh, that's the really nice thing about a competitive sale is uh, that underwriter's discount is is built into the estimates. And the less underwriter's discount that an underwriter takes, the more competitive their interest rate is, the, the lower their interest rate is. And so underwriters will typically take less than what is allowed for them to take. So in this transaction, in the pre-sale estimate, uh, we're allowing 1.2%, 1, 1.2% 1 <clears throat> 1 of underwriter's discount. I'm not sure what the underwriter will ultimately take, but oftentimes it is significantly less than that uh, because, again, the more of that they take, that's an interest item. It, it adds their total cost up, and then they're less competitive relative to those other bidders. But what, I'm, but what I'm getting at is um, I think what I'm, I guess, asking is 
um, it seems to me like maybe we should be looking at something like that because I think it goes against your debt just for the year in which it was issued. Other, and then after that, it's gone. I mean, it doesn't go against your debt. Medina, that was a, a Bloomington project. Uh, cities are limited to $10 million uh, for bank qualified debt every year. If you don't use it, it goes away. Medina did not issue any debt this year, so it was able in conjunction with St. Paul Park and Independence to issue enough debt to fund the project in in Bloomington. And what, what you're getting at is there's a fee that's payable to the city for doing that, and it's negotiable. A uh, deal the city did last year was at 65 basis points, slightly smaller principal amount. This year was the full 10 million at 50 basis points. So. That's fifty thousand dollars of free money to the city. Mm -hmm. And do you have to have the ten million in the bank? No, no. no you just you. It didn't work here because you were going to be issuing other debt. I mean, okay. You know. So you can't issue any debt, not no, even not even the equipment that certificates. Specific, they wanted the full ten million. They were trying to fund a big project, so They're, they wanted they I mean, wanted blocks of ten million. It, it's advantageous to deal with as for few cities as possible. Sure. So okay. that the the more you have available, the more attractive you are. And Medina had the full ten million. Okay. Independence had less, and St. St. Paul Park had less as well. So I just want to keep that open because um, it, it's a cash flow thing for the city, uh, free money. So uh, I know next year we're going to be issuing debt for the water tower, so it might not work. But in the future, let's keep that in the back of our minds. So. You're basically, in that case, using the borrowing capacity of the city right. on behalf of another city. Correct. Correct. Yeah. 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 And if we would want to explore it or, or do it, which I'm, I'm not against, I think if, if we know we're not going to do anything in a year, which, I mean, you know, the water tower thing was moving along and stuff, so we really um, right. weren't sure whether it's going to be 19 right. or 20 or whatever, but we probably would want to have maybe even just a simple policy that says the city right. council is in mm -hmm. favor of... of Allowing that in when it, when it works for certain years mm -hmm. or, or whatever. So. Well, now, could you issue some debt? So in a year like this, you could do eight and a half million of bank qualified conduit bonds. Right. Uh, right. IRS tax code allows the city to issue ten million in any given year of bank qualified bonds. Right. And this issue is is taking, you know, just under one and a half million right. of that capacity. So that would leave an additional eight and a half million. Uh, of that bank qualified capacity. The reason why, and, and you can certainly do uh, you know, taxable bonds, you can do tax exempt bonds that are non-bank qualified, but in the world of municipal bonds, the lowest possible borrowing cost is tax exempt bank qualified. Debt. And you would want bank qualified just for? All else being equal, yeah. if you can achieve BQ, you, you want that. Yeah. yeah, okay, all right, well, keep it open. Thank you very much. Thank all right. you, everyone. All right. Um, with that, um, we move on to um, accept quotes and award the contract for the Kings Point Road water main and street repair. I believe this is Ms. Fowski. Thank you, Madam Mayor and members of the council. Before you this evening is uh, for consideration is to award a contract to, um, in this case, we're looking at Parrot Contracting for the repair of the Kings Point Road water main and the associated street repair costs. A quote package was submitted to five contractors for this work. We had three contractors indicate that they were too busy um, to quote on the work. They were thankful for us asking them, but they were unable to submit a quote. Um, so two quotes were received. Um, one thing that the council is seeing in the quote package, uh, we did issue an, ad an addendum to this quote package. Uh, the reason being is after we had council um, authorization to proceed with getting quotes, we had some discussion, a really good discussion with the uh, public works department with regards to how this water system works. And um, we've, what, we, what we found out is that um, while the quote package as, as originally approved would work, um, it would require using well five to feed the system. And the issue with using well five, while it meets all of the drinking water standards, um, there is, uh, I believe it's a color issue with using that. Um, so not only do you introduce um, a, a colored water into the system um, during the repair, but also uh, after the repair is made and the system's brought all back online, it, that system remains 
um, that, that colored water would remain in there. And I believe the last time um, when the original temporary repair was done, Public Works ended up flushing that out. Um, so from a systematic standpoint, uh, we wanted to include an addendum, and it, that's included so that it's at Council's discretion as to whether or not that would be awarded, uh, to put in um, a valve at a, at a location that would allow Public Works to valve it off and not have to utilize that, that well five as a backup. So with that, um, we did get two quotes um, as shown in your packet for the base <coughs> bid. That's the, the work that the council had authorized at the prior council meeting. And then we also have that alternate, which is for that valve work, which we are recommending awarding so that we could have a, a, a system improvement that would help um, from a maintenance standpoint for our public works department. Um, Parrot Contracting and Minger Contracting both submitted quotes summarized in your packet this evening with Parrot contracted, Contracting being the low, uh, the low quote on this for a total with base and the alternate of $93,523. Um, this is higher than what we were estimating. Um, we were originally, originally we were looking at about $70,000 just for the repair, um, which was you know, within 10% of the base bid. And once we had that quote package prepared, we we thought we could get about approximately $65,000 was the uh, opinion of probable cost. But as I indicated earlier, with um, with the current climate that's out there right now with these contractors and with three contractors being too busy to um, even submit a quote on this, um, we, we saw some higher prices than we were anticipating. So. Um, as I mentioned, we are recommending awarding the quote to Parrot Contracting, and I would be happy to answer any questions that the council has. Okay. Questions? How long will they, so if, if we go with the alternate bid, how long will, it, will the water be offline then? My understanding is we wouldn't have a service interruption with that alternate in there. Um, that we could coordinate it so that it would be minimal disruption to the to the residents. To put the it would be during the night. It would yeah. be night work, and you and they. We what we would do would be similar to what we did with the water bypass at uh, Lakeview. We would have everything ready to go, make sure the hole was dug, everything's prepped, ready. Then we would shut water off. Um, say like at one a.m. I would venture to guess to put a valve in. Maximum of three hours so they could probably get done a lot faster but okay and so they would do it between 1 a.m. I thought I saw 1 a.m. and 5 a.m. Yep. So yeah I mean okay. um, so you're talking three to five if we would happen to have to shut off I mean we'd be shutting off a large portion of the central area yeah. again and last time we did that when we had the water main break we fired up all five thinking hey great we've got this and the water clarity was not good and we did get a lot of phone calls and we ended up in that yeah. sub-zero weather of doing a lot of flushing and um yeah, we, we had a lot of complaints. And so. how are you going to um, notify the residents then that their water is going to be shut off between 1 and 5? What we would do is similar to what probably the Met Council did. We, we'd put it on our website, put it out on the Facebook page and on our thing, but we would have to do some door hangers and door flyers to make sure a mailing, you know, make sure it's yeah. well in advance to let people know, I mean, to do it at night. We could maybe even ask them if they want to do an alternative bid for do it during the day, um, you know, during, you know, say that 10 to two hour like we did before um but just with night it'd be just less interruption right. and a lot you know a lot less i would assume it wouldn't be a whole lot less costly during the day just no it's the same amount of work i mean yeah. there'd be a little bit of i mean i'm sure you're paying a little bit more overtime hours for right. your guys but it's the work doesn't change itself. right yeah okay but this i mean just kind of look at too in the future i mean this would help us you know drastically in the future too if anything would ever happen um the main break occurred between Maple Leaf and Big Woods on the main stretch, and there are no valves. There is one at um, at Big Woods, but there isn't none until you get down past Maple Leaf. But the line going off is um, before that, so okay. I mean, it, so there is no way to bypass around. So that's what this valve would do. We could shut off and isolate that area, and now we could bypass through Woodley mm -hmm. and keep them with water. Yes, they'd have a little reduced pressure because we come instead of a 20-inch main, we'd be feeding off the 12-inch through the neighborhood. Um, but but also they, temporarily, right? Okay. You know, except for the two hours or whatever, would be off, yeah. and we would have to go out and reflush some of the area because we will get some drawback, you know, in the hydrants and flush. But you know, but ultimately, in the in the end, 
it, it'll help us down the line too for okay. any future problems. Okay. So how many residents does this affect? Um, this would affect the entire central area. So everybody off of, um, if you come up, it would be the Pinnacle area, Pinnacle. the Sonder, North, North and South Saunders area, um, Cardinal Cove, um, Manor, everything in there, everything in the central system. So and then if we would, I think it actually would affect North. Palmer of, Point? <coughs> no, it would affect everything north, though, from that. So everything in Woodland Cove, all the way down Kings Point to the north. To the would north. Because yeah. we would have to shut it off. You know, They would come through, but we'd have to shut it off. So some mm -hmm. of that would be eliminated, too, in there. But the, So Palmer's Point and the rest of Woodland Cove, as well Every, as Hunter's Crest yes, and everything Turtle else Creek, to the, to the those east are all and good. south and okay. west would be fine. All right. Good. Good question. Anybody else? So, just kind of beyond this, um, well, five, given the quality of the water, is there any, what, I mean, I'm kind of thinking about the future, why would we have it? You know, is it, I mean, are we ever going to use it? It's an, it's an option to look at uh, that. We have well four, which is also a very poor quality water. Um, that it's that is strictly for a backup. Um, well, five is right now. I mean, we're off the pressure tank there and stuff, and that's one of the other issues. The pressure tank itself, when it sits, not being used, you know, we're getting the rust kind of build up in there too. Um, it, it all depends on what would happen in the near future for development in that area. There's property to the west there that would, you know, possible future development. You know, do do you Gary? Where is well that? five? That was in the South Saunders area, right off South Saunders Lake. Oh, Drive. yes. Yeah, okay. So you come right in off right, of, right in, well, right, right there. Off of 110, so yeah. It, that, that was what originally served that entire central area. Right, so, okay. And ever since I've been here, that it's it's been, you know, a, a tough, tough area for, you know, just mm -hmm. because of the high iron content in there. Okay. So, but, I mean, for future development, I mean, once the new tower goes online, you're going to relieve a lot of stress on the plant and on Kings Point, which would help this end of town too, because now that will be serving over there. Eventually, it'll have its own treatment plant and well down the road. But you know, for in the time being, while that you know, that tower's in service, you'll be freeing up a lot of actually you know more free water to go the other way too. So mm -hmm. we won't have we'll have the same demand, but we'll have storage available there. So uh, in the near future, you know, do we look at you know when we build the new well, do we trade one in? Well, four would be an option because that is, you know, a very poor one that's not used anymore. Uh, well, three will never give up. That's, I think, believe in the Mount Simon, and we don't ever want to lose a Mount Simon. What is well, my well five in? Um, I believe it's the Franconian. I, I, that's what I was going to say. Isn't well four in Franconian, too? I believe so. Hang on one yeah. second. I can tell you. Well, they're, they're shallower um, aquifers. I think that's why they're not quite as good a quality as the Simon. Wall 4, it's in the Hinkley. Oh, Hinkley, okay. And Wall 5 is, um, it just says uh, bedrock glacial. Mm -hmm. That's why, okay. So. so given this, the reason why I'm asking is um, having this knowledge that Wall 5 is not very functional. I mean, it's functional, but it's not something we're considering, and we're actually incurring extra expense not to use it. Um, does that build a case to put the new well in at the tower at the same time the tower is being built? I don't know if there's any advantage to put it in now. Um, we're looking more as a, as a storage right for now. Um, the thing you would run into is, you know, how good is that water quality? Mm -hmm. um, you'd be blending again, so you might end up with the same situation that you have. Uh, well 3 is very good water, so that's why we don't mind blending that a little bit more. Um, where when Well 4 was, it's terrible. Um, as an option right now, probably not. I mean, we're, we'll probably be fine with the amount of storage that we'll have there. Um, once a treatment plant goes in, yes, definitely then. So I would say let's save our money, wait, and invest as we need it. You know, we always have that in our pocket, four and five. I would probably keep five over four, oh, you know, really? to the time okay. being if we need to, if we really had to do a trade with for the DNR or whatever, you know, right. we could take everything and trade with four. Because that's, we don't own the property. We, we're on Three Rivers property where we do own well five. And, of course, for future development, maybe we hang on to five when just in case all that property to the west goes. Mm -hmm. So Okay. All right. All right. Any other questions? 
So um, are we in favor of um, awarding paired contracting uh, the award in the amount of, um, I think it's 93000 I don't have it right in front of me. 93523 Yeah. So I think this is quite a bit more. Uh, is this in our budget? I mean, it's like 20000 more, right? I don't think we... This is, this is repair, it right. comes, so we didn't yeah. budget for this. Yeah. Right. Beginning. It comes out of our water fund. Right. Oh, okay. I mean, it'll come out of our water fund. And we always have, a, I mean, we always know we're going to have to make some repairs, so. Yeah. It might be a little over our repairs budget this year. Maybe yeah. a lot over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we're, I mean, what kind of stuff you have to. Yeah. yeah. We, we have. Come back next year. Yeah. <laughs> That's why we keep a healthy reserve yeah. <laughs> in our water fund. All right. Any other questions? None. Is there a motion? So moved. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. A motion has been made to award the uh, contract to paired contracting in the amount of ninety three thousand four five five twenty three um, for the repairs on Kings Point Road water main and street repair. Any further questions? Hearing none. All those in favor, signify with aye. 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 All those opposed. Motion passes. So now a uh, professional service agreement for the street improvement projects for City Project 1-20. So we had our open house with the neighborhood. It went very well, very well attended. i um, very happy to see so many people here and interested. Um, it sounded to me if, that they were interested in having their roads improved. Um, big concern, of course, is the water runoff and how that's going to be addressed. So we'll have to work through those issues. And um, also it sounded like they really are more in favor of the bituminous versus the uh, concrete curb, which I'm too, from a city standpoint, since we would be paying 50% of those costs, I think we should go the less expensive route. So, Ms. Falski. Madam Mayor, thank you for summarizing. Um, as, as you indicated, the, the open house today uh, was well attended. Um, we heard some, some, we got some great information from the residents. Um, so we prepared this presentation, or we, pre we prepared this proposal um, anticipating a positive outcome from the open house. Um, and so it included for your consideration as professional services to uh, prepare a feasibility report and preliminary and final plans and specifications for a reclamation project that includes Lakeview Drive, Margaret Circle, and Shady Lane. Um, we've, we've already got started on the force main work, um, so this would be done in, in conjunction. Um, the final plans would include that force main work, but this proposal before you this evening is to prepare the components of the street, in, the street improvement project and the associated uh, work with the uh, Chapter 429 process. And I'd be happy to answer any questions that the council may have with this proposal or this proposed project. Are there any questions? Um, I just, I have one. So the estimated repair costs for um, the sewer line and uh, lift station is 140000 mm -hmm. But we also talked about what would it cost or that a portion of the actual road construction project should come out of the the this uh, should come out of this uh, sewer fund as well and we were going to look at what proportion percentage wise should be used for that because had we not been doing this project there would have been some costs associated with it as well so either way you know there would be some costs so i'm not opposed to the project um, I think we should move forward with it, and at some point we should determine how much of the street improvement project should be, how do you say, taken from the sewer fund. Madam Mayor, that's an excellent point. <coughs> Certainly with the feasibility report, we can that can be part of the discussion um, as far as, as looking at financing options and proposed um, proposed financing for each component of the work and, and we're certainly more than happy to take a look at how um, provide a recommendation to the council okay. um, for consideration in the feasibility report for financing alternatives okay. okay any other questions so are in this report is are all the comments from the uh, residents taken in uh, such as a gentleman that lives down on the 
down in the cul-de-sac and the water all running down there and it looked like there would be some additional work done down there so is that in the feasibility well that's certainly a component that we'll look into so at the time that we prepared this um, we didn't know those comments and and in all honesty we pre we prepare knowing that there's going to be some really good information that the residents share with us so we had um, the, the gentleman at the cul-de-sac we also got some information about old farm drain tile um, that we can look at and that's certainly something that we encompass in our proposal um, when looking at a project such as this Okay. Good. Any other questions? Otherwise, um, do I have a motion to pass resolution number 126-19 authorizing preparation of feasibility report, plans, specifications, bidding and professional services for the 2020 Street Improvement Project CP01-20 not to exceed $48,453. So moved. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, motion has been made by Mr. Chumperlin and seconded by Mr. Molitor. Any further questions or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify with aye. 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 All those opposed, motion passes 4 0. So next we have our discussion regarding Halstead and Drive and North Arm Drive pavement. So we have the coring and uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Mayor, members of the council. So um, it was uh, good that we got some pavement corings back from Halstead and North Arm. Um, you know, we were looking to do a mill and overlay project um, on those. On particularly, we were focusing on Halstead Drive. Uh, the corings came back not recommending that uh, that type of improvement for the majority of the road. There's a small stretch on that east-west portion that. Uh, a mill and overlay would be uh, a recommended street project, but the remainder of the street uh, is proposed for reclamation. And likewise, uh, North Arm Drive came in with the corings um, that the mill and overlay is not feasible. So uh, with that information, um, wanted to get that information in your hands for your consideration on looking at a, a potential 2020 uh, state aid project. Um, included in the packet were a couple of options that the council may want to consider. Uh, we've talked about, um, for example, on North Arm Drive to do a ditch project. Uh, at this point, uh, don't really was have Was that on North Arm? I'm sorry. Oh. It was on North Arm, wasn't it? North Arm, yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, to do a ditch project, which is eligible to use state aid oh, funds no, for that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. North branch. North branch. Okay, that's what I thought. My apologies. Thank you. North branch. North branch. So in, in the packet, it's incorrect. Option <laughs> option one would be North Branch Ditch Project. My apologies. So, um, looking at what costs would be associated with that um, would depend on how much material would need to come out. So, we'd certainly need to take a look at if the council is interested in pursuing that project. Uh, we'd need to work with uh, Public Works Superintendent. Uh, Peters to determine how much material get a, a high level estimate on how much material would need to be taken out because that's the majority of your cost is getting somebody a contractor in there um, for the time to excavate that and then also material trucked off the site um, another option that the council may want to consider is a reclamation project on Halstead or on North Arm um, another option would be to look at a mill and overlay on Halstead as a short-term improvement, understanding that we wouldn't see the, the uh, pavement life out of a mill and overlay on Halstead, um, just given the condition of it, but it would certainly improve, improve that roadway surface for a period of time. So. Ms. Falski, could I ask a question? Um, so, you know, we had talked about um, last time there's a whole list of roads that we thought we could do there was a some were milling overlays and some were just doing the one and a half or two inch whatever repaving not repaving but overlay, overlay. Um, and we said if we do overlays was, I can't remember it was one and a half was it one and a half inches okay if we do one and a half over inch overlay on some of these roads it could maybe get us another five to ten years and so I'm, my question would be, what if we did Halstead with this one and a half inch overlay? That could maybe get us another five to ten years, and then you look at it at a total reclamation. 
if, if that's something that the council is is would like to look at it was presented as an option um, from the pavement specialists that were looking at the core that you could certainly look at doing um, you know a short-term improvement which would get you you know depending on how the pavement performs five to ten years or ten years and what what would the cost of that be do you know um, I believe we were looking at um, we were looking at an overlay for the whole area around four hundred and sixty thousand dollars. When you say the whole area, what do you mean? Um, for that whole segment, so I we were looking at a mill and overlay, um, which is similar to what we would be looking at under this alternative. But the um, but other, not, but scaling back on the section, or okay, so the. But the overlay, not mill and overlay, just the overlay would be a little bit less or not? I think we'd be looking at a comparable cost because you have to mill at the side to get the, um, to match the pavement to the driveways through the okay. corridor. Yeah. All right. So we're looking at about 400. Correct. Cent. Okay. Okay. Questions. <laughs> kind of a lot to digest because we had thought we could do the mill and overlay mm -hmm. on Halstead. Um, I think we were wishful thinking. Yeah, wishful Unless. thinking. Mm -hmm. um, I guess my initial thought is um, I would be supportive of the ditch project. Right, I would too. Um, I'm not so sure I want to tackle reclamation on either one of these. I think there's other areas. Did the ditch project would, you know, utilize state aid funds, which is what we want to do. Uh, reclamation, uh, I just don't see these, especially on, on is it North Arm or um, West Arm, I guess. North, North Arm would be the reclamation. Right. Uh, I just don't see the traffic counts to justify that. Um, Halstead, as we've talked about, has its own issues with um, what, was, <coughs> what was done in the you past. And I think um, four hundred thousand for a mill and overlay or overlay is pretty steep um, for that section. So. I th when I look back in the packet, I, I see a number from a couple of packets ago of two hundred sixty-five thousand for Hall. I see that too. Thank right. you. Yeah. Yes. yeah so I, the four hundred didn't seem that seemed way too high. So I, just just for point of clarification. Yes. Answer. Thank you. I had the four hundred. The four hundred. Um, the $458,000 is a reclamation cost for Halstead. Mm -hmm. As we've pre previously discussed, a mill and overlay of Halstead would be $265,000. Okay. Whether and that changes anything or not. So, okay, well, two sixty five. dollars yeah, it does. And but that's, that's a municipal state aid street. Right, that, and this is what would come out of MSA funds. Yeah. So my question is, two sixty five. dollars um, how, so we're saying whether it's a mill and overlay or whether it's the one and a half or two inch overlay, it's it, cost wise it'd be about the same. Which one would last longer? Are we saying both would last about five to ten years? Between an inch and a half and a two inch overlay. Well, I, well, what were, we well, we were taught we've been talking be about doing a, a one and a half inch overlay on some of these roads that are. Some of them you get by with just doing the overlay, but like this, like like Ms. Foskey saying, you'd have to do a mill. Okay. Just you had to do edge milling on the sides, just because there's curbing in places. You had to start, you know, going in through with matching curbs. So, I mean, mill and overlay, you know, and if you're going to do that on Halstead, I would almost recommend that a two inch. Then it really, if you're, I mean, I don't think you know we can do a cost estimate both ways, but I don't know what your professional opinion is. If you're going to try to get as long a life as you can, let's do a two inch on it and see how much life we can get out of this road. Then mm -hmm. the two inch you might be pushing 10 to 15 years. Yeah, I think in this case it's not really, you know, as we've been seeing before, you can do this overlay or you can do the mill and overlay here. I don't really see, okay. it's not quite the black and white choice here. It's just kind of, it's yeah. kind of a combo of the two. Okay. So is there any appetite to do? A mill and overlay for two sixty five. Knowing that it's you know, ten years, twelve, fifteen, we're not sure. 
at which time we think we'll have buy-in that we can connect them to the city water if we're going to reclaim that because isn't right. that the issue we talked about yeah right are you talking about buy-in now or buy no buy-in if we get five to ten years off the mill and overlay so in five to ten years when we probably will have to do the re the, the reclamation i'd be closer to ten but yeah it is a rough stretch. So mm -hmm. would we put in a moratorium then if we did a mill overlay? Oh, absolutely, I would. Okay. I think that's what council spoke about last time. Yeah. If, if right. this was, you know, we didn't know the results of the coring, but I think you had spoken about putting mm -hmm. a moratorium on connections until this finished up its lifespan. Um, I don't see a cost for the ditch project. Do you mm -hmm. have an estimate on that? So we we don't just because we we don't know how much material would have to be um, taken off, off the site. Uh, Superintendent Peters and I were discussing this this afternoon, and you know ballpark we'd be looking at between fifty and a hundred thousand dollars, depending on how much material. So that would be the neighborhood of what we'd be looking at um, to get that state aid fund balance down to a level where we could continue to accrue. Um, that we wouldn't be having uh, mm -hmm. a penalized mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's an accessible process or project no no, uh -uh. no really be. Mm -hmm. why was uh, or was that north because on page 151 under well it's listed under north arm yeah it should be uh, west branch and it's a gravel road so right. they're just doing some ditch improvements mm -hmm. but it was stating there assessment mm -hmm. policy this project would require a feasibility study and public hearings oh that would be for north arm that's uh, yeah okay for so a reclamation project yeah, for a reclamation project yeah oh okay even though a is a ditch project but again it's mm -hmm. not north arm it's, right pardon me, okay. north branch. so the ditch project is north branch yes yeah. ditch project north <laughs> branch well i, I think I guess, well, we need to do the north i mean i think we can do the north branch project regardless I think the only question is, and I don't know, I agree with Mr. Molitor, I, I, this coming year, I don't know that we want to tackle North Arm. We will have to tackle it sooner or later, but I'm not sure in 2020 we want to tackle it. Right. I, I guess it, to summarize, I'd be, again, supportive of the ditch project on North Branch, and I think um, the, the modified mill and overlay on Halstead probably makes sense. I do agree with... Uh, Mr. Peters about probably putting a two-inch overlay just to, to get the most out of it. Right. Um, you know, in, in a perfect world, probably wouldn't go with that, but I think utilizing um, MSA funds as well as um, seeing some consistency on at least the road surface for that entire stretch, including what we just put <coughs> in, uh, just makes for a, a better overall straight. So. Okay. I would support that. I would support that as okay. well. Okay. I agree. Okay. Okay. So ditch project and a two inch overlay? Yes. Okay. Thank you for the guidance. Okay. Like overlay or whatever we're calling it. So. Yeah, whatever we're calling it. Edge mill, overlay, mill overlay, what some variant of that. Street improvement project. Do you um, need sure. a motion or just direction? Um just direction is fine at this point. Thank you, okay. Madam Mayor. All right. All right. Good. Um, staff reports. Mr. Baroni. Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor and Council. I just got a few items um, to, to mention. Um, I'll start off. Uh, you all drove onto our new parking lot. They've put the final lift down on Friday and striped it over the weekend, so it looks great. I wouldn't say it's like a Christmas present, but it's pretty darn nice for city staff and visitors to City Hall to be able to use a nice parking lot like that. Um, I did want to touch on a few other things. Uh, one item um, will involve Mr. Beatty here, but we'll get to that at the end of my items. So was approached, uh, actually Ms. Tabor and I were approached by um, Mediacom, and they were uh, asking us if, they, if we could provide a letter of support to um, the Minnesota Department of Employment and Economic Development, um, they're looking to try to find underserved areas via grants. And so we wrote a letter of 
of support in that. I wrote, I wrote that last week. Uh, the deadline was last Friday, which is why you guys didn't get a chance to to vote on it. Uh, this accrues us an additional five or ten points. I forget what Zach told us, but one nonetheless, it helps us to. And they gave us a template to use. So uh, th this particular grant is for the Farm Hill Road era, area, so that currently does lacks broadband access, and so. Hopefully they'll be successful, and at least this letter will hopefully get us closer to that. So if that's the the, the case, uh, we'll find out, I'm sure, down the road. Um, and then uh, our next council meeting will be in three weeks. We have a five-Monday month this month of September, so we don't meet again until October 7th. And then the final item has to do with the information that came up uh, as we were talking about the comp plan. And I separated this one out because this was something that Mr. Beatty was able to help us with versus uh, Eric Weber from WSB, and those will be coming back to the council in October. But I thought I'd ask uh, Mr. Beatty, uh, and I did put this in your um, in my staff report that I attached to the packet, uh, the back and forth between Ms. Bruce and myself and Mr. Abel, and then... Uh, the reply from Mr. Beatty. So if you don't mind taking a minute or two to kind of summarize the the, the questions that she had on the on the um, legislation related to the statutes, uh, that would appreciate it. Sure. Um, Madam Mayor, Council. Well, as you see, um, Ms. Bruce sent an email, I think a week ago, over the weekend, asking or pointing out that there had been um, <clears throat> An amendment to the statute a couple of years ago dealing with system statements and asking how I'm pointing that out and asking in effect what the significance of that was in regard to where the city is with uh, considering its comp plan amendment and my answer in in the email is that it really has nothing to do with that because the section that she was pointing out dealt with system statements that's that's something that comes out early in the process of considering the decennial uh, comp plan amendments. The system statement is sort of the Met Council's general guideline of, of development. They amend those every once in a while, but each 10 years as the decennial census or a comp plan amendment uh, is upcoming, the Met Council sends out an individualized system statement for each community. It sort of summarizes whatever changes have occurred in the general uh, system statements and also gives some individual information for the community, population estimates and so forth, to guide the, um, the comp plan amendment that uh, will be occurring over the next year or two. The uh, Minatrista's uh, system statement came out in September of 2000. 15. Um, the statute says that you get 60 days to challenge that. It lays out a process. Well, obviously, we're way past 60 days after September of 2015. So it's the wrong statute to be dealing with. Where we're at in the process is the end of, of the whole thing, where the city has put together its comp plan. It's been approved by Met Council. And if if there is a dispute at that point about between the Met Council and a city and, with regard to its comp plan, we're talking not about the system statement, we're talking about a contested case hearing, which is an entirely different statute. Secondly, there were a couple of confusing amendments, going back to the system statement section, a couple of confusing amendments, one that actually overlapped the other one, but in both cases they were for system statements that were going to be effective uh, one in 2018 and one in, I think January of 2019 again going back to ours ours long predated that so those changes would not have affected us thus none of that really has anything to do with where we're at thank you I believe that's all I had except the one thing I did want to touch on um, uh, Mr. Peters is going to talk a little bit uh, about uh, the storm cleanup and the costs associated with that. I believe the city council at a previous meeting this year said we were talking about uh, tree fund and stuff, and, and tree fund has generally been looked at as as something where you plant trees, but as brought up by, I believe, Mr. Molitor and the council agreed, 
Um, it also can be used to clean up trees. So he'll give you a quick overview on what those costs are, and I believe there really wasn't a way to quote, get your approval of this. So we're just going to administratively uh, address these costs back to the tree fund because it was for generally tree cleanup from the storm slash tornado that we had uh, Labor Day. So I'll let Gary quickly talk about the costs incurred. Thank you, Mr. Brony, Madam Mayor, Council. What we had was um, basically one, two, three, four, five, five, pretty much five or six days of cleanup. If you include uh, well, a little bit on uh, the Monday night of Labor Day, which we only just came in and opened everything up. Um, we ended up clearing 15 to 20 properties um, of debris. Two to three of the properties brought their brush here, um, which really helped us out a lot. We did issue three to four burn permits. Uh, once people found out that they could actually kind of burn on site on their own property, they were with no with no charge. Um, that they thought that was great. They want to take care of it there. Um, we did do 14 tandem loads of chips that we chipped out of the brush. Um, it was taking a long time, so we started hauling the brush here to the burn pile here. Um, we did roughly, I believe Randy said it was 28 or 29 tandem loads of brush that we brought here. Um, the burn pile was kind of going, we just kept adding to it a little bit all day and pretty much it's all gone, which is great. Um, we had a total of 159 regular hours, 32 hours of overtime, and a uh, rough estimate, um, Brian will check my numbers and stuff, but a little over $5,500 in cost sure. for the cleanup. Yep. So, um, Gary, I just want to add to this. Um, several people mentioned to me that you guys did a fantastic job. They said kudos to you guys. Uh, they were so impressed. They actually noticed that Hennepin County had their work crew out there and had like 10 guys and did half as much work as you guys with only a few. So they just were very, very impressed, and they said, please pass this on to Public Works. You did a phenomenal job, your response, and, and just everything. They were just very, very pleased. So good job, good job. Thank you. I'll pass on to the crew. Those yep. guys work hard and they're great. Yep, they do. Yeah, we got stronger yep. guys in Hennepin County. Oh, yeah, so. yeah. So so I wanted to the one last kind of uh, item related to this uh, quickly. So when I got here, it was going to be 10 years ago, the policy was you're on your own. So we never really have, we don't have a policy on what we'll do and what we won't do. And so I've asked Mr. Peters to do some research, and I'm sure between he and I and, and uh, we'll try to eventually bring best something back to the city council that will kind of direct us to what we will do and what we won't do because what we don't want to be in the business is of you know doing entire cleanups on people's property from you know front to back you know but there has to be some but we're more than happy to help but like I said when I got here 10 years ago the policy was you're on your own then we've modified that over the years um, because it, you know, we seem to have more events, and there are, seems to be more storms that right. take down trees and brush and fences and whatever. So, so you'll probably be seeing sometime something like that over the winter months. You know, we're not in a hurry now, but uh, uh, generally, if it's near the property line, these guys will grab it. So, all right. So, do, do we know does Hennepin County have something like that? That in that, of course, they were working right down 15. Right. Yeah, county So roads, those yeah. are miniatures to residents, and the sure. stuff wasn't laying on the road, but right. what are they doing? It, and we will definitely ask them what their policy is. There's going to be a little different. That's because it's being from a county perspective, but we'll just you know, tap some other cities on the shoulder about what they use for policies and try to see what fits for us and works best because – you know, we don't mind helping. These guys don't mind helping. They they got other things they could do, but they don't mind helping when, you know, that's what we're in the business of is helping people. So, um, but we just don't want to have this end up being ten and twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 worth of stuff. So, so I think this is a, a nominal cost considering some of the storm damage we had here. So, and Ms. Trumbull, to answer your question, we did most of them on 15. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah the, county, the county did do some, and um, just to kind of open it up, but we did – for most of the residents down there, we did most of theirs. Yeah. Okay, great. Any other staff reports? So um, real quick, I, um, I'll give a quick report. The Gillespie Board meeting was moved to next week. Um, I did attend the Northwest League meeting. Um, it was very well attended. We, we didn't have a speaker. We just did uh, city updates. And interestingly enough, um, one, besides Medina, uh, we are one of the lowest 
at least those at the table, um, lowest tax rates. Um, Medina was just a couple hairs below us. And also very interesting, most of the growing cities, I was surprised, uh, their increase, their levy increases were anywhere from 7 all the way up to 15%. So we were actually, as a growing city, not all of them, but as a growing city, we were actually on the lower end with our 5.9. Some of the smaller cities like um, Maple Plain and um, I think Loretto even had a, a pretty significant hike, but um, Long Lake, they're not growing. They're very small communities. Um, they either had a one or a zero or flat rate increase, but still, um, we we're right. In, we're actually on the lower end. So anyhow, with that, um, that's it for me, Ms. Martinson. Uh, WCC meeting is uh, on the 19th, and it is being held at the Gillespie Center, and it is an evening event this time. Uh, the last LMCD meeting was canceled, so the next one uh, will be next week. And we have two Pioneer Sarah Creek watershed meetings this week. Tomorrow, the subcommittee meets to go over the responses we got for the requests from the engineering firms. Mm -hmm. And then on Thursday, the 19th, is our regular monthly meeting. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Otherwise... Um Brian, you're almost on target. Is there a motion to adjourn? <laughs> so moved. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, Ms. Mortensen made that motion and Mr. Molitor seconded. All those in favor signify with aye. 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 All those opposed, motion passes 4-0. You are off by a minute. <laughs>